Hello and welcome back to What The If. This is a What If video about Gon being raised in Meteor City. This is the second video of the Chimera Ant arc, so if you want to see the story from the start, go check out my channel where I've made a playlist of the whole What If from start to finish. But if you're ready, let's start the video. Gon, Killua, and Kite see three ants and then two more coming in behind them, carrying a few human slaves. The ants stop and seem excited to see the three hunters, saying, Look, it's three more of those special people. The queen will want you guys for sure. Gon interrupts the ants, saying, Let these people go before I kill all of you. The ants laugh. Ha, huh, compared to you guys, these people are worthless. Then, callously stepping on the human, killing them instantly. Gon's anger starts flowing out as Kite places his hand on Gon's shoulder. Kite calmly tells Gon, control yourself, we can't afford to have you at less than 100%. Kite says out loud, I'll take the two in the middle. Gon, you take the one on the right. Killua, you take the one on the left and paralyze the one in the back if possible. Now go. The three hunters rush into action, with Gon quickly going after his foe while Killua dodges his ant's attack and paralyzes the other one before continuing his fight. Kite summons crazy slots and gets his rifle, blasting the ants with bullets. I started blasting. Bang! Bang! Wow. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. And quickly overpowering them. Gon uses John John Kin to knock out the ants, then finish it off with scissors while Killua quickly grabs his ant and twists its neck, killing it instantly. Now, the only ant left is the squid-like ant, Killua paralyzed. Gon goes to finish him off, but Kite stops him, saying, We'll keep him for questioning. Now, untie those people and let's get out of here. So with that, Gon, Killua, and Kite take the ant back to the city and try finding out all they can about the Chimera ants. Kite asks, What are all the ants planning? But the Chimera Ant won't talk, refusing to answer anything. Gon still wants to just kill the ant, but Killua asks if he can talk to it first. Killua asks the ant, What is your name? Or do Chimera Ants even have names? The squid is confused but tells Killua his name is Ikalgo, and that some of the newer ants like him have chosen names. Killua introduces himself, saying, I'm Killua, it's nice to meet you. Now, please tell us what you can. I could see how horrified you were when the other ant killed that person, and I could see you didn't want to fight, you just wanted to get away and survive. That's what we want. A lot of you ants have been killing humans, and we just want to stop it. Ikalgo shrugs, saying, Yeah, those guys were horrible. They take way more than we need to survive, and they don't even share with the queen. The big ones like them are also cruel and treat us weaker ants like trash. I'm glad they're dead. But I can't turn on my queen. She gave us all life. While they continue trying to get answers from Ikalgo, back at the nest, the ants are talking about the humans who were able to kill them. Colt has taken Ramrot to the new nest, where they have discovered that Ramrot has gained the use of aura, like the special humans they saw. Colt concludes that being hit the way Ramrot was, must have opened up the ability, and he orders Ramrot to do the same to him. Ramrot agrees, gladly hitting Colt, even though he believed it wouldn't change anything. But it did and Colt can feel his aura opening. This leads to the ants learning about aura and unlocking it for the stronger ant squad leaders, making the ants even more powerful. This is also the time the ants armies are basically complete, and the queen is almost finished developing the three royal guards. Back with Killua and Ikalgo, Killua asks if the ants would accept a peace offer if the hunters were to let the ants live as long as they don't kill or attack humans. Ikalgo thinks for a moment, and tells him, some of us ants can remember our past lives before when we are human and feel bad when they have to kill people, but the bad ones don't care, so if they were gone, I think the queen and her loyal subjects could be persuaded. Killua smiles, so if we send you back to talk to the ants, Gon interrupts saying, no way we can trust them. Kite agrees, telling Killua it would be better if they didn't let him return to the nest. Killua tells them, but he's helping us. He said it himself. It's not all the ants acting crazy. Most just want to live. Maybe they just need to be taught right from wrong. Kite tells Killua they will think about it further while they have to wait for a reply from Netero and the Hunters Association. As four days pass, 
Kilowatt decides to take matters into his own hands, and as they take turns watching Ikalgo, Kilowatt asks, Can I trust you to try your best to stop this from getting worse than it is? Ikalgo promises he will do what he can, but then asks, Why do you want to help me so much? Kilowatt tells him, I know what it's like to be told to kill people all your life, and I understand not knowing how to tell your family you want to stop. I think we're a lot alike, and in another time we could have been friends. Ikalgo is shocked by Kilowa's kindness as Kilowa lets the Chimera Ant go. Ikalgo also warns Kilowa about the incoming royal guards and how they are way stronger than any ant and will protect the king, who will be the strongest ant ever born. Then Ikalgo slips away into the night, heading back to the nest, determined to convince the ants to stop killing humans before the hunters come and kill them. Kilowa goes to explain that Ikalgo escaped to Gon and Kite, but sees Gon already awake and pissed. Gon tells Kilowa he better keep his promise or I will kill him myself. Kilowa feels bad for letting down Gon, but tells Gon he knows Ikalgo's a good guy. Gon goes back to sleep. The next day, Kilowa warns Gon and then Kite about the royal guards, prompting Kite to tell them they all need to get stronger. So, after a week of waiting and training, the Hunters Association tells Kite to return to his mission and a team would be arriving soon to pick them up. But before that, they need to find the location of the ant's new nest. Kite agrees and takes Gon and Kilowa back into the field. Kite tells them that finding the nest is the most important thing and are only fighting if they have to. So before long, Kite is able to locate the nest by following a few low level ants and then marks the location on a map so they can take the new team there when they arrive. However, the three hunters feel a terrifying presence and are unable to identify where it's coming from. Kite gives the map to Kilowa and tells him and Gon to start running. Then Kite is attacked by a strong Chimera Ant, losing his arm in seconds. Kite and the others see the Chimera Ant standing between them and everyone knows this must be one of the royal guards. Gon charges up his aura to Kilowa and Kite's surprise. Kilowa goes to stop Gon but Gon dashes at Pitu before Kilowa can connect. Kite tells Gon to run, but Gon is too angry to listen. As he runs forward, charging his John John Ken attack, Pitu sees Gon coming and switches her attention, wondering if she attacked the wrong human first. She runs at Gon and easily dodges his first attack, then punches him out of her way. This gives Kite enough time to summon crazy slots, and he gets his scythe. Kite seems disappointed at his role but still readies himself to fight. Kilowa helps Gon up as Kite tries attacking P2. P2 is again able to dodge the attack. You three will be a great first meal for the king, P2 says licking her lips. Kilowa tries convincing Gon to run, but Gon refuses to leave Kite, even though Kite tells him to run. No, Gon says, we can do this. Gon again begins charging up John John Ken at an amazing rate, which again, grabs Pitu's attention. Wow, this guy might be strong. He doesn't seem fast enough to hit me, but if I'm not careful and he does connect, I might be in trouble. While Pitu is watching Gon, Kite uses his scythe's signature attack, Grim Reaper's Dance, and attacks Pitu. Damn, I was getting careless, Pitu thinks, as the blade spins towards her. Pitu readies her nin, forcing it all to her hands and barely stopping the scythe as her and Kite lock eyes. P2 uses her superior strength to push the one-armed kite away while keeping the scythe. She looks at Gon and says, I'll use this to kill you, then leaps towards Gon who is still charging his nin. P2 swings the scythe just like Kite and is about to hit Gon. When Kite makes the scythe disappear, P2 is confused as her momentum continues to throw her forward, but with nothing to attack with, she misses Gon. Gon then blasts her with his paper nin attack, knocking her down, but not doing much damage. Do it now, Kilowa, Kite shouts, telling Kilowa to blast P2 with a thunderbolt from cover, paralyzing her in place. Gon then starts charging up for another John John Ken, ready to kill P2. Knowing they're still overmatched, Kite grabs Gon and runs, telling him not to be stupid. Kilowa quickly follows after them as P2 stands paralyzed as the three hunters get away. P2 eventually loosens up and debates whether she should go after them, but decides to go back to the nest, excited to see what she can do with Nin and wanting to make her own techniques. 
Gonkai and Killua run for what seems like hours until they are almost completely out of NGL. And finally stop when Kite tells them they've gone far enough. Gon collapses on the ground as Kite scolds him for not running away. Kite says you could have been killed, you put Killua in danger as well, what the hell were you thinking? Gon tells him, I couldn't let you die and we could have beaten that thing if you didn't stop me. Kite laughs as he bandages his wound. I don't think you could have beat that ant with three Junjunkins. Could you not tell that she was on a whole nother level? Gon looks quiet as Kite continues scolding him, but praising Killua for understanding the situation and knowing that getting the map to the extermination team was the most important thing. They continue talking until they see a car in the distance, and when it arrives, Netero steps out with two other hunters. Netero greets the hunters before asking Kite about the situation. After learning everything and hearing how strong the ants are, Netero agrees that this is a big problem. Netero takes the three hunters back to the city so they can get Kite to a doctor and plan their next move. Next week we'll continue the story there. I hope you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe if you did like it. Also, if you haven't already seen the video I posted on Wednesday, check it out. It's the next part to my new My Hero What If about Deku having his father's fire breathing quirk. And it covers Shigaraki attacking USJ. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later.